Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are taking a look at none other than the present toys Jack Torrance. Now you may be sitting there saying, whoa, 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 hold the phone Justin, I thought you don't review horror figures. And yeah, usually I don't. But I'm a huge Jack Nicholson fan, and this figure looked pretty darn good, so I thought to myself, let's just check it out. Now, no, I haven't seen The Shining, although I do realise it's a cult classic film, it's got a big following, so I'm sure you all will let me know the backstory of the character and all of that extra information down below. But I'll just be reviewing this from an artistic perspective. We'll be talking about the paint applications and the detail and the texture of the skin and stuff like that. So all all of that other backstory stuff, that'll just have to be known by you because, yeah, I simply don't know it. Now, I picked up mine from Comic Sanctorum. I have put the link in the description below, but do bear in mind, it's third party, it's unlicensed, it's an unofficial product. Now, that being said, this isn't a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. Will my horror collection grow now that Hot Toys is hopefully someday releasing Pennywise? We'll have to wait and see. But for now, what we are going to do is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here, of course, we have the box art, and we do have a massive image of Jack Nicholson as Jack Torrance on the front of the box. We have a massive logo of his name on the side, and all of the warnings down below. Now, I've only ever purchased one other thing from Present Toys, and it was their Lucius Fox. Some people really liked the figure. I personally thought it was just okay. It was serviceable enough to go into my display. Whether or not this guy is going to be a worthy addition to your collection, we'll have to find out throughout the course of the video. At the very least, you can see he does come with a fair amount of stuff. First, in-hand impressions are pretty positive. I'm loving the look and feel here. But what we are going to do now is get all of his accessories in both trays, laid out in the light box, and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have all the parts and pieces. Now starting off with the display base first, it's super simple, but it gets the job done with minimal fuss. It's the classic Hot Toys oval style display base, Jack Torrance down the bottom. You've of course got an image of Jack Nicholson, it's rather haunting, and you also have the words repeated, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. I'm pretty sure that's an iconic line from the movie. Now you do get two different Jack Nicholson head sculpts. Let's talk about the standard one first. I personally don't love this. Now I've seen some people online saying, yeah, this is great. And from some angles, I can see the likeness, the skin texture is on point and the paint applications look good. I also love the sculpt of the hair, but this one is absolutely my favorite. I can see the likeness, I love the crazed manic expression, and you do have a fully sculpted set of teeth, plus the tongue and some gloss on the inside of the mouth. This definitely has a ton of personality and will be being displayed on my jack. Now you do have the photo from the hotel and I'm pretty sure someone was mentioning Jack Nicholson was supposed to be in there somewhere do let me know which version of the photo this is down below. You also get a series of notes. I'm not exactly sure what they say, but they are nicely contained in this little Ziploc bag. You also get a cup with some translucent liquid on the inside. Obviously, it's not real liquid, but it's fairly nicely done. It's a convincing effect. You also get an axe, which I'm pleased to report has a real metal head up the top here. It is rather sharp and the blade is a little bit slick, so do be careful. It also has some weathering lightly painted on the surface. I love when they give us real metal accessories, specifically when they're not overly heavy. Yes, it does have a little bit of weight to it and the handle is relatively light, but you do have a decent sculpt. 
I wouldn't have minded seeing this also being made out of the material it's supposed to be, which is of course wood, but for now, I love that they've used real metal. You also get a full array of hands, including what appears to be a trigger finger hand and also this kind of gun barrel gripping hand, but they can be used of course, for various things. What we are going to do now though, is get Jack himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And even though I don't know a ton about the character of Jack Torrance from The Shining, as I've already told you, and I'm sure I'll tell you a bunch more times as well, you know, just to remind you, I still really like this figure. From a technical perspective, they've done a great job here. The body choice is on point. They've added a little bit of padding just to, you know, fill him out. The outfit looks great, and even though I don't love the main just standing there regular smiling head sculpt, I do love the other one, which you'll see on the body in just a second. Overall though, yeah, present toys I think have done a commendable job. I wouldn't be surprised if we see another company take what present toys have done and improve on it just that little bit more to give us that perfect Jack Nicholson likeness, but I reckon if you're a fan of The Shining, this guy is a pretty darn good option. What we are going to do now though, is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him up close and personal, and in just a second we will be swapping out the head sculpt to the one that I prefer out of the two. Don't get me wrong, I can see what they were going with as I said in the accessory segment, but I just love that crazy wacky looking sculpt. Now top to bottom, this is a relatively straightforward figure. We've already discussed the head sculpt, but it's worth talking about the way it sits on the body. It's not too big, it's not too small, I think everything looks in proportion. Some people have said the neck looks slightly too long, but for me, I think it looks great. He does have have multiple layers up on top and a padded fat suit underneath, just to bulk him out a little bit. He does have a texture or a pattern printed on his shirt, and based off the images I've looked up from The Shining, RIP my browser history and my Google recommendations, yes, this does look accurate. You have some Velcro, so technically you can futz around with it and get it to look the way you want. On the outside, you do have a corduroy jacket. It does have, once again, some texture on the surface, and you do have some real working pockets. So if you have stuff that you want to store in there, yeah, you totally can do that. Then coming down to the jeans, they are a little bit acid washed, just like you'd expect of real jeans. They are blue, you do have some real working pockets out the back here, and some orange stitching. So yeah, they look how they're supposed to. Then coming down to the boots, I really like them. They do have some weathering on the top, the sculpted in laces look great, and yes, you do have some full tread on the bottom, plus a little bit of weathering on the surface as well. So overall, even though this is a pretty straightforward outfit, I think they've done a great job. Now, taking a look at the second head sculpt, this is my preferred out of the two. I really like the way it looks. That crazed expression, the open mouth, it sits at pretty much the same height as the other one. Maybe the neck is slightly shorter, but either way, I'm loving the way this looks. Does that mean I'll be collecting more horror figures as we go on? Who knows, but for now, yeah, I can really appreciate this figure from an artistic standpoint. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, I ended up going with BVS Batman. You all know I have no other horror movie figures in the collection just yet, so I couldn't really bust any out for you. This should give you an idea though, because I know a ton of people have BVS Batman, and he's one of my personal favorites. So whenever I can showcase him in a video, yeah, why not? As you can see, BVS Batman is a beast. He's bigger, he's also wider. Jack Torrance is using just a regular true type body, so it's a little bit more of a slender frame, which works for me. I think, yeah, this height for just a regular dude is perfectly fine. Just going over articulation. Now bear in mind, this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. 
I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I'm willing to go. Now, starting off with the head sculpt, it is on a fixed neck. So going forward, you get a ton of range. Same with going back, swivel, and then pivot side to side. The arms will go up to about there. They will, of course, go forward and back on soft ratchets. Butterfly joint at the shoulder, swivel at the bicep, a double bend at the elbow, and of course a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. As for the torso, you have multiple joints, but he is a little bit more padded. So going forward only to there, going back to there, swivel and then pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there and kind of spring back down a little bit. They will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend at the knee, and lastly, a ball joint down here for the ankle. Just wrapping up on the present toy's Jack Torrance. Now going into this, I let you all know, I know nothing about The Shining, I know nothing about this character, so I was just going to review him from an artistic slash technical perspective. And from those two perspectives, I can honestly say that yeah, this guy checks a lot of boxes. Let's start off with the outfit first. I think it's great. It fits the body perfectly, it's not too baggy, it's not too tight, it allows for decent articulation, and it looks fairly accurate. All of the materials that they've chosen are suitably high quality. He also has a great underlying body, so yes, if you want to get crazy with your poses, you totally can. And then we get to the head sculpts, one of which I think is better than the other, but they are still relatively high quality. Don't forget, this is third party and it is unlicensed, so it's not an official piece. Therefore, they aren't going to go as far as some official companies may to get the likeness 110% there. I'd say the more manic expressive sculpt is probably at a solid 90 for me, where the other one drops all the way back down to about a 60%. So it depends which one you prefer and that will probably influence your decision on whether or not to pick up this release. The accessories though are great, specifically of course the metal axe. So no matter which part of the figure you like most, I'm pretty sure there's going to be something that you're going to like with this release if you are a fan of The Shining. Now, as I said in the intro, I got mine from Comic Sanctorum, but it is an unofficial release, so keep that in the back of your mind. If you are heading down to the description, check out the link to Six Scale Network, the Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.